immunotherapy holds the key to cancer cure. We're not there completely yet for every cancer, every patient, which is why we have work to do. This is the James Cancer Free World Podcast. I'm Steve Wartenberg, and today my guest is Dr. Zihai Li. Zihai is the founding director of the Pelotani Institute for Immuno Oncology here at the James. Zihai filled us in a year ago in episode 40 about the creation and game plan and the goals for the Institute. And now he's back to fill us in on the first full year of operation. Welcome, Zihai. Well, thanks, Steve. It's good to be back. Before we dive into immunotherapy and what you and your team are doing, let's talk a little bit about Pelotonia, the major funder of the Institute, $102 million over five years. And this year's Pelotonia was a little different due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There wasn't a ride. Instead, th- instead, thousands of people participated in what they called My Pelotonia, which is a great idea. In this, people could set personal goals and raise money. So what was your My Pelotonia challenge? What did you do? Well, I, uh, I decided to personally challenge myself uh, to at least ride 20 miles per day for at least 20 days. So this is sort of like 2020 kind of uh, idea. And... But most importantly, I want to be part of this movement. I I want to be part of this uh, fundraising movement and building something remarkable here at the James. Frankly, I can't help it. You know, I have to be part of this. Uh, There are lots, lots of challenges uh, in this year, you know, COVID-19 crisis and so forth. But I, the Panatonic movement cannot stop. So how many days of 20 miles or more did you actually wind up riding? And, and how did you find, how'd you find the time to do it with all the other things? Well, init- initially I thought 20, you know, 20 days, like um, almost consecutively was a big deal. You know, uh, it was not. I, I realized <laughs> after 10 times, it, it, this can be done. It, like, I just kept on going. So I, I lost track how many days I did it. And but, you're, uh, you're now an incredible, yeah. you're in, now in incredible cycling shape, aren't you? Well, I, that's, that's the other thing. I thought maybe this will train me, right, to be in yeah. shape. So, uh, so fantastic thing. Uh, you know, truthfully, I, I'm inspired by so many creative ways and people participate in my Panatania this year. Well, great, because obviously Pelotonia is huge for so many reasons. One of the biggest ones is funding what you do. So let's give everyone a quick overview a recap on what is immunotherapy and tell us a little bit about how it actually works and why it's become so important in the future of cancer treatment of course uh we know traditionally we treat cancer with surgery with chemotherapy with some sort of radiation therapy all of which uh can help the body but it's kind of difficult to cure cancer because cancer, uh, very sneaky cancer, they kind of migrate throughout the body. They can go to the brain, go to the liver. So what if we can design a system that can find wherever cancer is and then you limit that? Uh, This dream is not, it was not like fantasy because we do have an immune system and the immune system, of course, is, is amazingly adapted to fight against infection, like viral infection and so forth. Um, after so many years of painstaking work, we now realize, yeah, we can turn on the immune system. We can, we can eliminate the cancer that way. So immunotherapy in a nutshell, it, it is to utilize the immune system as a medicine, if you will, to fight cancer. I remember in the past you told me that presently that roughly about 20% of all cancer patients are good candidates for immunotherapy, that what has been discovered and developed so far will work in their cancer. Is is that, am I remembering that correct, 
correctly and is has anything changed since since then uh that has not changed unfortunately uh so we discussed this last year 2019 uh, we're very excited about some of the new therapy uh including so-called immune checkpoint blockers you know one of the immune checkpoint is pd1 we can block pd1 you know we can treat cancer that way this is, has transformed cancer medicine, I think, uh, especially for stage four solid tumor like lung cancer, melanoma, and so forth. You are absolutely right. We have not cured everybody yet. So only 20% of patients respond to this type of therapy. So that underscores the need for better, you know, better a newer therapy and underscoring the need for research and discovery. So like anything else in science and cancer, it's going to be step by step by step. One new discovery will, discovery will increase it a little bit, a little bit more with another one. And you'll build that 20% to 25 and 30 and so on. I'm t- I take it you're working currently on several um new drugs, uh, clinical trials that are going to address this and bring this percentage up. So here's the hard part in terms of explaining things so that I'm going to understand them. But why don't you run through a couple of the major research programs uh, that you and your team are working on and, and what they what the goals of them are and, and where they are in the in the line of process? Right. Right. Uh- well, absolutely. So, yes, it is one uh, step at a time, right, to, you know, to really uh, completely move to the finish line and to, de- to, to declare victory against uh, cancer in this, uh, you know, war. Uh, a lot of things we are doing, um, actually, as soon as the Panatonin Institute for Immune Oncology was uh, announced publicly in July last year. We have embarked on strategic planning process. We have identified several very important areas for growth and investment. Uh, I can give you a few examples. Uh, The first area is to uh, create a robust cell therapy program, which is to utilize the cells from our body, the killer cells, the natural killer cells, the T cells, and to treat cancer. These are the cells in the, immu- in the immune system, right, that recognize and kill cancer. Exactly. Unless the cancer, like the PDL one you described, hides it from them. Exactly. Exactly. So the technology is there. You know, the technology to obtain those cells from patients and then train them, expand them so that it can infuse them back to patient. All those technologies are there. Uh, So we're building a a very robust program for doing so. That's one program. The second program is really to understand the fundamental immunology. So we mentioned PD-1 just now. But that's just one button, right? One button among so many right. different buttons, so many different switches in the immune system. So we're discovering more switches, more uh, critical molecules in regulating the immune system. Why would we do that? Well, once we discover them, we can flip them on and off to turn the immune system uh, so that they fight cancer. Uh, so that's that's another program, fundamental well, wait, b- before, Im- immune oncology. Yes. Before you go into the next one, I want to dive a little deeper into that because I'm fascinated by this. So PD one is yes. one. Is it a protein? It is a protein. So that's a protein that it affixes itself to cancer cells, and and tells your immune system, "Hey, we're okay. Don't come and get us." And so this is maybe the first and the biggest one you've discovered. But you're saying there's dozens more. PD ones out there that are being discovered, and then once you discover them, then you can come up with ways to 
eliminate them so the uh, immune system, the T cells, the natural killer cells can see the cancer. That is correct. Uh, I guess I need to explain a little bit. So I said the immune system is a, a phenomenal defense mechanism. Uh, it is designed to ensure survival of the host. In patients with cancer already diagnosed, of course, the system has failed. We need to understand where is the problem? What is the problem? How do we fix it? So PD-1 is a molecule that actually serves as a brick of the immune system. Naturally, we want that. We want a brick so that we don't have immune activation against our own tissue. We don't, have auto, we don't want to have autoimmune disease like lupus. But in cancer, however, cancer cells, cancer are so sneaky, right? They hijack this molecule, this normal mechanism, so that they can turn off the immune system. Now we know that is the trick that cancer use. We can design a way to break it, to uh, block it. This is exactly what are we doing clinically. What you just said is also correct. What else are out there? So besides PD-1, there are other mechanisms, other bricks that sneaky cancer cells also you use to turn off the immune system. So, uh, so, so why is it so hard to find them? I know that that it, there must be dozens of reasons, but why is it hard to find the next PD-1 that's that's doing that same break blocking thing? There are tremendous uh, heterogeneity between patients, between cancer types. What is uh, complicated is that what is the constraining the immune system in one patient may not be the same mechanism that inhibit immune system in another patient. So yeah, PD-1 seems to be important for 20% of patients. So the other 80% of patients, there are other mechanisms of suppression from the immune system, from the, uh, from the cancer to the immune system. So that's why uh, we need to individualize our approach. We need to study every patient's cancer, every patient's immune system in almost excruciating detail. Once we do that, then we can um, accurately predict which pathway is more important for that particular patient. And by doing so, um, we th could have a better effective therapy. So it's just finding all these different versions of PD-1 and, right. and then figuring out how, what will work against them. Right. And the other thing I want to mention is that this sounds daunting, right? Every patient you have to study. So, right. so uh, to, to create details and so forth. But one thing we need to realize, the principle of immune response is universal. What works in 10% of patients actually already prove, already inspire everyone that the other 90% patient would possibly also respond to this kind of immunological principle-based therapy. We just need to find the defect okay. that works, that is, that is uh, uh, important for that particular patient. I'm not okay. sure if I explained it clearly, but, but you know, um, sometimes when people say, hey, look, uh, only 10% of patients respond, that's kind of depressing. I look at this very differently. I've, I, to me, 10% people who respond, that means once you understand how to do it, everybody else will so, yes. benefit from this strategy. Once you find the other PD-1s out there, uncover exactly. them, then yes. it, it, it'll, each one you find will cure, help cure more people. Correct. Exactly. Okay. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Zihai and he's going to talk about a couple more specific uh, research programs and clinical trials that he and his team are working on.
A revolution in lung cancer treatment is happening at the James. We're proving lung cancer isn't solely defined by location and stage, but rather the individual molecules and genes that drive it. Simply put, there is no routine lung cancer. That's why our world-renowned specialists put their expertise towards treating one particular lung cancer, yours. At the James, we go beyond the routine to prevent, detect, treat, and cure your lung cancer. To learn more, call 1-800-293-5066. We're back with Zihai Li, the founding director of the Pelotonia Institute for Immuno-Oncology here at the James. So Zihai, fill us in on a couple specific areas of research, clinical trials, things that you and your lab and other labs within the Institute are working on. Oh, absolutely. So many, so many specific examples. Uh I'm going to mention a few. Um, one thing we have been doing uh, in my lab uh, is about this molecule called GARP. GARP, uh, like G-A-R-P. Correct. Okay. And you must you must know this this book, right? The word according to GARP. I remember that book very well. Yeah, and, and the movie as well, 1982 by Robin Williams. It's a fascinating movie to watch. But uh, but this molecule, it's a protein. Um, in the immune system, this molecule serves like a hook for a bad player in a system. Uh, and this bad player is uh, TGF beta transforming growth factor beta. Now, why I mentioned that? Um, this uh, molecule is equally interesting. Uh, maybe not, not as interesting as the movie, <laughs> but for immunologists, it is. Uh, it's a, it's a, a fascinating uh, system to turn off the immune system. What is interesting is that now we know where they are, how to find them. And more importantly, we develop a system to block it. Uh, the system is, is an antibody. So we, have, we generate this antibody that can specifically block GARP. By doing so, we block TGF beta. So if you. Oh, you may ask. Well, I was going to say, yes. if you block GARP, and GARP's job is to hide the cancer cells from the immune system. Yes. So if you block GARP, then these cancer cells are now visible to the immune system in much the same way that you talked about with the PD-1. Exactly, exactly. And then we also know that GARP does so by serving as a, as a, as a hook for TGF beta, which is known as a bad player. So you're right. We can block GARP. We can make the tumor visible to the immune system. And we have generated a, a very interesting antibody. It's so interesting that it shows pretty broad activity against cancer in preclinical models. And it is so interesting. Uh, a pharmaceutical company has licensed this, this antibody. We are co-developing this antibody. Uh, hopefully, in a not too distant future, we, within a year, we hope, uh, we will test this new strategy for the treatment of cancer. So I'm very excited about, about this, this uh, development. Oh, I have, I have a bunch of questions from what you just said. So when you mm -hmm. talk about you've developed an antibody, that means some sort of treatment, some sort of drug-like thing that goes into the body and this antibody affixes itself to the GARP? Is that how it works? Exactly right. So absolutely. The, yeah, anybody, anybody uh, serve as a biological, a therapeutic. Yes, it is a drug. And uh, we are very excited about this particular drug, potentially. Um, we have done quite a bit of work um, for advancing this platform into the clinics. We are working with the uh, a biotech company 
uh, and working with FDA so that we will conduct our clinical trial within a year. And so this is moving forward in a very uh, rapid pace. So, uh, so, so the PD one, I, I in PACS is invo- involved in ten to twenty percent of cancers. Is that correct? Correct. So, yes. So with GARP, how many, how many different types of cancer, how many overall cases do you think this could impact? Well, that is uh, that is a beautiful question. Uh, we don't know yet precisely, but what we've shown, uh, importantly, is that for those tumors that don't seem to respond to PD-1, they can still respond to GARP-based therapy. In other words, we think that 80% of those patients who don't, receive, don't respond to PD-1-based therapy they can potentially be subject for GARP strategy. And furthermore, we think even for the 20% patient who respond to PD-1-based strategy, adding GARP will make that response better. Uh, See, there's another example of how combinations of treatments seem to work better than one alone. Exactly, exactly. So, so I think this is a this is a uh, something that is very important. Uh, it's, it's grow grown uh, from my lab, um, and we obviously can only do this uh, with the support of the Panatonia community, uh, the James Cancer Center. We have a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure for doing some of the work that I just described. Um, and I, you know, we're moving forward. Pro- probably one of the first cancer type we're going to treat uh, is actually lung cancer. So I work with uh, David Carbon uh, to advance this program collaboratively. That's the GARP treatment you're going to use it on. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. I can tell you some more examples. You know, uh, there are a lot of stuff that are exciting here, uh, all actively ongoing here at Ohio State in the uh, Panatonic Institute for Immune Oncology. Yeah, definitely give us one or two more of these big, exciting things. You, you, you And just so people understand, within the Pelotonia Institute, there's labs. You have a lab of several people, these great scientists, exactly. and then someone else. Right. And there's, I don't know how many labs, four or five, ten labs, different labs led by world-class researchers and physicians like you. Yeah, the PIO is a big community now. We have existing physicians and scientists working in this area. I think about 50 or so people. 50? Yes. Wow. Okay. And in addition, so last year, you know, since July 2019, we have recruited 15 new investigators into PIO. So it is an army of people. You do need that. You need the team. Yeah. You need a, a critical mass to advance this program together. So one other, one other thing that's interesting, uh, again, is to uh, overcome resistance to PD-1-based therapy. Has to do with uh, a, funny, a funny molecule. <laughs> okay. Uh, called a hedgehog. A hedgehog, like the animal. Yeah, okay. exactly, animal. So hedgehog, this molecule was actually discovered initially in fruit fly. So when genetics, when they try to mutate gene in fruit fly, and those mutants develop a funny shape, and one molecule it was mutated, and this fruit fly grow like uh, like like hedgehog, you know, very short, has a spiky uh, spine, very uh, very um, in appearance. This larva looks like hedgehog, hence the hedgehog pathway. And why I'm telling you this, the hedgehog pathway is actually very important for cancer development. And so one of the example is uh, this very common basal cell carcinoma of the skin and, you know, hedgehog pathway is a very important uh, driver for that 
cancer. But what uh, Dr. Yi Ping Yan, uh, Dr. Yan uh, is the division chief of hematology. What he found is that this hedgehog pathway can also help cancer cells to evade the immune system. Huh. And more specifically, it, this, this hedgehog pathway can actually make another cell type very suppressive. This cell type is called a macrophage. This is a little bit more specific. But macrophage is kind of a f uh, cells that, that are very potent uh, in engulfing other cells, the so phagocytosis in other stuff. But in the cancer, it turns out the hedgehog signaling can make macrophage to display molecules like PDL1, which which is a ligand, which is a sort of ligand for PD1. Well, why I'm telling you this? Uh, the bottom line is that it, the macrophage in the tumor is also pretty bad, and it can suppress the immune system. Um, we think uh, maybe without any exception, uh, once you turn off macrophage, you can make the T cell much better in fighting cancer. And one way to turn it off is to through this uh, uh, hedgehog signaling pathway. So Dr. Yan is working on that. He's actually uh, working with uh, physicians in the in the gyms, uh, Dr. David Carbon, Dr. Dwight Owen, uh, to try to do a clinic trial by combining PD-1. We talk about combining therapy by combining PD-1 with hedgehog inhibitor. And this would be for people with um, basal cell carcinoma. This is, will be for patients with basal cell carcinoma. And this is also going to be important and applicable for other cancers, like lung cancer, melanoma, even liver cancer. Okay, so this hedgehog is not just in basal cell carcinomas. You're, the thought is it's, it's all over the body, just like GARP and PD, PD-1. Exactly. So I, I, I'm very excited about this as well. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, together with Dr. Yan, Dr. Carbone, Dr. Uh, Dwight Owen, and myself, we are uh, writing a major grant proposal. We submitted a proposal to National Cancer Institute, NCI, to try to get more funding to uh, support this work. Funding is key, uh, and it sounds like you, yeah. you've put together the preliminary data that, that knock on wood will get you that funding so you can open this yes. clinical trial and prove, hopefully prove that, that this is going to be a step forward. Exactly. So let's sort of wrap up, and I think people can tell your excitement over the future that that – the, the the work going on in your lab and in other labs has really excited. So look ahead and why are you so excited? What do you see from the Pelotani Institute and from others around the world all coming together and combining that are going to just make immunotherapy just explode in the next 5, 10, 20 years? Oh, yes. Uh, we think uh, cancer medicine is uh, reaching to a critical point. Um, this point requires everyone to work together uh, to really uh, tackle the disease in a more fundamentally different way. We have all kinds of therapies, uh, target therapy, traditional therapy, but now we know, we are convinced immunotherapy holds the key to cancer cure. We're not there completely yet for every cancer, every patient, which is why we have work to do. Uh, but once we are convinced this is the direction we need to go, 
then we need to have a strategy. We need to have a roadmap. We need to have support to do so. Uh, I'm very, very excited that we are here. Uh, we have this uh, amazing Panatana Institute for Immune Oncology to do exactly that. Okay, excellent. And I think that almost goes back to our beginning in talking about the actual Pelotonia ride and how important it is in funding the work of you and so many others and bringing the community together to understand the importance of your work. So um, next year, I think you need to, to keep riding 20 miles a day or more and then maybe hopefully knock on wood we'll all be able to eight nine ten thousand of us will be able to ride together in august well steve i don't think i can keep pace with you but yes i'm very excited uh looking forward to that well i know you said you rode 25 miles last year your first time <laughs> so i'm going to challenge you to do 50 miles next year i think you can do that easy you're you're in good shape now shannon joe accepted Okay. All right. Well, thanks. And maybe you'll come back in a year and you'll fill us in on the advances in your work with GARP and the Hedgehog and, and some of the other great work that you and all the other labs are doing at the Pelotonia Institute of Immuno-Oncology. Yes, uh, I'm indeed very excited about all those initiatives and also very excited in uh, recruiting the best and brightest mind to join us uh, in this battle. Uh, I am so thankful to the Panatonic community to support us. So uh, I firmly believe tomorrow is brighter, for sure. Great. Okay. This podcast is brought to you by the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, Arthur G. James Cancer Hospital, and Richard J. Solov Research Institute. For more information, check out our website, cancer.osu.edu.